Well, the finishing touches on the coolers are done. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Olson, Live Fire Republican. Pretty much, I think I'm just here to wrangle the fire and make sure everyone's fed. Yes. Chef David came all the way out from Michigan to join us on a two-day adventure, looking for some steelhead and eating some good food. I'm really excited to have you. You brought his good friend, Ruben. Ruben. Here to catch some fish with these guys. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's gonna be an incredible two days. We have a really big day ahead of us today, so we better get the boat hooked up and we better get on the road. Let's get it. Let's do it, boys. Let's get it, Stay close to the boat. Let's start inside first, then the inside first calf. And it should be uh so these fish are right there. No, they don't hold on. That rock hit hard. Right? I need to remember that probably worked. So there is an element of seriousness here in the air today. Chef David has a really, really cool recipe, one that I've never even really thought of, but we were talking about it last night at dinner and a light bulb went off in everybody's mind and we went, yeah, that's what we're doing. But it's gonna take catching a keepable fish, which is in this case a hatchery fish. So we're gonna be fishing very hard throughout the morning, trying to get on a fish. No! That... I'm just kidding. <laughs> he did an instant replay, he got me. Get on a fish. No! That... I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the goal is to find a keeper and cook that bad boy with this special method. So we got three rods. We got a lot of people casting. I think it's gonna happen. I think we're looking up. I feel good about it. See the zombie guy here. Beautiful to see too. That's my favorite part about the early winter fishing is, is seeing the end of the cycle of spawning of the salmon. You kind of get to see like how the river works and how it feeds itself. You know, once those salmon swim up and die and spawn, they leave the gravel all fresh and turned up for the steelhead that come in and now spawn. And then as soon as they're done, the spring Chinook will come in and it all is just that cycle of life. And without one fish, the other one can't survive. So it's very, very, very neat to get to experience that and spend the time outdoors and see those different changes. There we go. Keep reeling, keep reeling, hard, hard. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. What is, what's going on? What's no. moving? The bite felt good, but the popper's not moving. Interesting. I saw a flash. Is he hooked down there? Hold on, let's see. No. Let's see. I'm done. Yeah, super strange. Snake? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a setup. <laughs> nice. Good catch, my friend, here. Yeah. There we go. First fish on. Look at a rig. Oh, yeah. We were in, we were in need of bobbers. That's the morning bite. You saw the flash, all right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Score. Nice. One That's for amazing. us. We'll take it. Whoever this was, I'm sorry, but thank you. All right, I got a deal to make for tonight. So, first one to land the fish doesn't buy a drink for the rest of the night. Uh, you boys on? I like it. All right. And I'm only saying that shit right now because I'm I am one right now in front of me. I got my bobber running right in front of his face. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise. Oh. Hey everybody, Captain's Log. Oh, 700 hours. We've hit a bump in the road. Only one thing left to do. Send it. Luke Rapid that we just pulled up on is an awfully big one today. It's at a really weird level too. There's a lot of rocks sticking out of the water. A lot of obstructions to hang the boat up on, so I've chosen to send these guys around. We're gonna get the drone up in the air so we can follow me through just in case anything crazy happens. But it's best to take precautions on days like today when we're out having fun. We don't wanna get complacent, we don't wanna get somebody hurt, we wanna make it safely down the river. So I'm going on this one all by myself. Little and the boys are walking around. It's time to run this thing. Come on, you coming? Coming with? He doesn't want to. You don't wanna come with? Yeah, he doesn't want to go. <laughs> that was a hard no, bud. Good. Hey, here we go. Coming with me. 
What up? We made it halfway through the rapid. Now we're to the big part. He said, hey, I've never done this before. But well, why, we're not? In why not? <laughs> why not? So we're gonna life vest up. We're gonna run this big rapid. Okay, so if I go through this and I yell high side, if I say high side right, you wanna jump to the high side of the boat, okay? If we hit and the boat like turns left and the left side starts going down, jump to the high side of the boat. Don't let your momentum get pulled to the side that the water's going, okay? Okay, here we go. Hell yeah, a little. Okay, right about there, guys, you're good. It's another really good salmon spot that isn't only the occasional steely. Oh, that's a fish, get him, get him. Fish on, lift up, lift up. Oh my God. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. We'll recover from that one. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. But you know. Fish on. Yep. Reel up. Reel up. That's a big one. That's a big one. Keep it tight. Barbless hook though. Barbless hook. So keep it nice and tight. Keep that tip down a little low, down a little low. Keep it, if his head comes out of the water, tip goes down. Good job, brother. Yep, that's a good fish, dude. That's a good one. I'm gonna get right below you. So you land the fish in this thing, okay? I lay it out. You just turn him right into the head into the net. Oh, I got too much current, too much current. One more, yep. Oh, he's still walking. Okay, one more. Yep, yep, yep. Now up, get his head on the surface and I'll scoop him. Good job. It's a hatchery. Yeah. It's a hatchery, brother. <laughs> Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Give me What's some, up? brother. Nice job. Nice. So we had just it? gone through there. Bobber swam about four feet away. He came back on it. Ghost town. Went back Epic. through there. Next cast. Yeah, nice. Very next cast. We Ooh. got dinner, boys. <laughs> oh, that was exciting. Look at this beauty. Whoa. Look at the color on that. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. It's a bullet. Wow, boys. There she is. In all her glory. That's incredible. <laughs> Ruben, look at that. Give her a hold. Beautiful. Pick her up That's for the beauty, camera. mate. Look at the spotting on that. Wow. That's amazing. That rose color running all the way down the side. That's amazing. That's gonna be perfect for for the stuffage. Oh, completely. You yeah. know, for the the stuffing's gonna go well in that one. Little, do you like this fish? I, you I like actually you I, like this fish. You little? like this yeah. one? <laughs> dinner. You want to make dinner? Make it. Oh. Heck yeah, boys. Now Heck little yeah. Little. Good. Good. I got gotcha. you. Fish, got him, got him, got him. Oh yeah. Whoa, holy moly. That is definitely the one I saw. Woo. Oh man, this guy is trying to death roll me off. Death roll. Oh man, what a day. What a freaking day. Did that one make us work for it or what? Oh God, Miss America did it. Look at that. Wow, yeah, hop out in here with me. Wild, right? Yep, it's a wild. We're not gonna take this one out of the water. And just look at it. That is the one I saw go by too. That's why God, I turned that is, around. That is so we, incredible. Alex, we just floated over this. We fished every hole we've passed for the last hour. The one I didn't stop. This is the only one I have stopped in you like went five all miles. The way back up water. I rode back up river because I saw this fish sitting there, and I thought she'd be sitting right there still. Went a little bit further up. It's amazing. <sighs> Man, we put in a lot of work today, boys. But the witching hour is upon us. We're about to go cook a beautiful meal, and I think we might be cooking on the right hole. I think we are. <laughs> this is amazing. Beautiful. It doesn't get any better than this. This is so cool.
What a grind today, you guys. These guys came all the way out from Michigan to hang out with us. So I've just made it my goal for the next two days to get them on some fish. And we kind of threw a wild card at it today, not really knowing how the fishing was gonna be in this location that we came to. It turns out it wasn't as good as we thought it was gonna be. But we have worked so hard. We've been getting out of the boat at every spot, casting our butts off, fishing hard with four or five different methods all day. And the witching hour finally hit. Right when we're about to cook, of course, we catch one, so we don't want to go cook, but we have to because this stuffed fish recipe that he's about to do is going to be awesome, but I want to get this man a fish first, so five more casts, okay, everybody? Five more casts, then we're going to cook. All right, so for this recipe that we're doing today, guys, I have actually done this before in a recent Addicted Life where uh, I actually made this little tripod thing, this little tripod cooking stand that we're going to make today. Oh, losing everything here. I'm actually going to make it out of sticks and that's how we're going to keep this fish above the fire to cook the darn thing. So let's go find us a few. Ooh, this is a good one to start. So we want three pretty much identical to this. This is perfect. Another perfect one. Well, that one's even got a little, little extra with it. It's okay, that might help with a little support here. And this one should work pretty perfect. Get that little fork in the road, just like so. Now, so for my little side rails, for each side of this thing, I'm gonna use a couple of sticks just like so. That might not be big enough, but we were gonna find out. There's another one right here. Nice and waterlogged so it won't burn. I thought this one that's a good one. Okay, we're ready. Just like this. This one right across here. And I want to make sure my spacing is correct down here towards the bottom so I can keep that fish at a reasonable level above the fire. That's fairly good right there. That's exactly what we want to do. Yep. For the steaks for sure. Oh, yeah, and then just hang them. Little prelim, everybody. It's what we're, can't tell them too much. But we're listen, doing something special. Listen, we got something super epic for tomorrow. A little sneak peek here. We're going tripods, we're alongside the river, and we have tomahawk steaks. It's gonna be epic. Ooh, but tonight, it's stuffed steelhead. We were so blessed to get that one fish today. It really, really saved our bacon, if you will. Um, and it, you know, without it, we wouldn't have been able to do this recipe that we're trying to do here tonight. So it was a, a true gift from the creator to get that one today. And now we're gonna cook it whole, full of stuff over the fire. I'm so excited. I'm, I've known about this recipe for a long, long time, but never had a chance to try it. Mainly just out of my own laziness, I guess. But the way we're gonna cook it is gonna be really cool as well. So let's do this. I got a steelhead. What the hell do you want to do with this thing? <laughs> Epic day on the water, man. Listen, we have the fire going. We have a super, super incredible rust. We're going to do actually a stuffed salmon with the chorizo. We have the fennel. We have the parsley. And then we're going to pair that up with like a Mexican style street corn with a chipotle aioli, the cojita cheese. And we're going to finish a bit of lime. Oh, God bless you. What kind of cheese? <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> well, listen, the sun's going down. I'm super hungry. Yeah. We slayed it on the water today. Let's get it over the fire and get it moving, huh? Hey, Pierre, go. Let's, Let's do this. The first component of the stuffed steelhead recipe is going to be chorizo. We're going to prepare it directly over the fire. We're going to get it beautiful and crispy. And then we're going to take the rendered fat from that chorizo, spread it across the salmon, exterior, interior. We're going to stuff it uh, with some caramelized onions uh, in the cooked down sauteed fennel. It's going to be beautiful. First step, though, getting the chorizo directly in the fire. Here we go. Produce we're stuffing the steelhead with, we're gonna have fresh fennel, incredible, red onion, lemon, and micros. We have some parsley we're gonna finish off with, gonna be super incredible. And today we're gonna be seasoning up the steelhead with the Weber seasonings. This is the Cajun seasoning. It's gonna be a really, really nice bit of heat, a little bit of sweet. It's gonna be super, super good uh, with the fresh herbs, amazing. I'm gonna just shade this super, super thin. And so what I'm doing is I'm curling back my knuckles 
and I'm using those knuckles as a guide in terms of thickness, in terms of how we want to slice through <clears throat> this fennel. Fennel's really sweet, has a really neat, kind of almost celery-like texture, but it's just beautiful. Really, really good stuff. I've never ever seen that stuff before. I gotta get a piece yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. It actually has like snack. a has like a black licorice type of taste to it. Oh, very nice texture too. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Very nice. Key in folding back the knuckles on this cup is obviously making sure that we don't go through on the way down. Nothing more disastrous than surviving a day of fishing and cutting your fingers off at the end of the night, right? So we have a medium-sized fennel head. We probably need about half of it. We'll go a little extra because we catch big fish. All right, next step's gonna be taking out the fennel, the onion. We're gonna get it inside of the pan directly over the fire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of cooking oil into the actual pan. Now, what we chose to do was some avocado oil. Actually, I love when I'm out in the wilderness, camping, hiking, fishing, uh, bringing items just like this. I'm not carrying oil, I'm not carrying butter, it's contained, it gets the job done. And the cool part about avocado oil is the high smoke point oil it allows us to do really cool things like grilling and like cooking directly over fire. Now, heat up the pan. Well, the reason that we're heating up the pan, always important to get veggies, get your protein, your produce, get them into a hot pan first and hot oil. You don't want them to let them sit and cook in a cool oil. And what I really like about those spray cans too, easy cleanup, no mess. And we're out here, it's pretty cold. It's like 40 degrees. And that's still very vis viscous, that liquid is. It's spray bottle still really works. And it doesn't take long. Look how hot that is already. That's amazing. So we're just gonna let the, hand, the pan heat up. We're gonna let the, uh, this is actually, we can do this. We'll create a lid right over the top and let that chorizo, chorizo do its work. Now, one of the things to note when you're looking inside the fire, we have our little corns on the cob and we're just kind of par roasting those almost. So uh, this would be a very traditional way of using uh, fire and we're just getting those veggies right down in the pit uh, we are integrating a little bit of the essence of the hardwoods here that we're cooking with, but largely what we're doing is we're just par roasting. So you're par roasting, par boiling, par cooking, par roasting. You're just starting to cook it through. It's not going to cook all the way through. Uh, we're actually going to let uh, the grill do its work on this corn, but we're just softening it up, integrating a little bit of smoke. It's going to be beautiful. Now, one of the things we're going to be doing with the cook today, you know, see this throughout the course of the cook is we're gonna layer flavor upon flavor. So that's one thing that chefs do, is we're gonna talk about integrating flavor in through the veggies and all similar flavor. We're using here in New Orleans Cajun seasoning, uh, tons of paprika, a lot of pepper, a lot of garlic, really, really good flavors. But we're gonna layer it in right through the veggies. We're gonna finish off the sausage, integrate it in there, and then you'll see it with the rub that we're gonna use around the steelhead. It's gonna be incredible. So it's layering flavor inside and out. We call this process unnecessary bushcraft. <laughs> Actually, I think I think Jordan might have coined that one. We're literally just going about finding logs to use as tools because the tools we brought along with us just don't seem as applicable to what we're using here. So, logs it is. Here we go. Here's our unnecessary bushcraft. Whoa! Look at that. A little bit more. That's we're ready to cook. Cool. Yes, what? sir. Good. You should, you should take this home with you. <laughs> See, I swear <laughs> to God, put this in the back of your truck. I'm not kidding around. I make one every time. Dude. <laughs> Put it in the back of your truck and bring it with you. Yeah. I'm serious, that is super cool. Pack that Just sell it. <laughs> and now the process on this, we could sit and we could cook this down and we could go really, really hard with the char and the caramelization on the onion and the fennel. What we're really looking to do is just release some of the water, release some of that uh, hardness that you get out of that flavor of that onion and just, just release it out, just tenderize it a little bit because it's still got to cook inside the fish. So I don't want a, a very mushy onion and mushy fennel. I still want some of that texture. Okay, they asked for a fish. They're getting a fish. Let's wash this one off real quick. Maybe de-slime it a couple times. There we go, there you go. All right, we're on to the fish. Jordan did a beautiful job removing the gills gutting out the fish, now it's time to put scores in the filet. So what a score is, is just a really thin cut 
that moves along the fillet and I'm just dragging the knife through the fish. Now I have to get a little bit more pressure in here on this fish, it's a pretty hearty fillet. There we go. And I just wanna get in here and what we're doing is we're just opening this fish up to get into some of that meat, right? There we go, nice and easy. And I'm just gonna run these, uh, these cuts about every one inch down the fish. <clears throat> I wanna get a lot of flavor down into the fillets of that steelhead. And we're gonna do that with a combination of the olive oil, the chorizo fat, and the New Orleans rub from Weber Seasonings. Fish is too big. Fish is too big. <laughs> it keeps going. I know, it's like, it doesn't stop. But we're gonna get down here. I really love this kind of tail meat portion of the fish. Beautiful. Flip. Here we go. Now the same thing, start with the angle tip of the knife up, down towards the belly here. Same thing. I'm gonna get a little more pressure on this as we go through, make these cuts much quicker. up, seasoning, hit assist on the hand, and then we'll go pretty aggressively over the exterior of this fish. And I want to really bury it down into each of these slices. So a lot of times the complaint you'll hear about whole fish is I just, I can't get the seasoning onto the filet that I really like. This is a super easy way uh, for us to bury a ton of flavor right into the fish. And we'll do the same thing back on this side. Again, the avocado oil, a higher heat cooking oil is avocado oil. And we're just gonna go right in with this Cajun seasoning. Cool part about Cajun seasoning, it's gonna give us a lot of really nice smoked paprika, garlic, pepper. But go aggressive with this. This is a super big steelhead. This is a beautiful steelhead. But I wanna go heavy with this in here, okay? All right, next up, let's go in with the chorizo. There we go. And this is stuffed. First thing we do, with all this incredible pork fat, it's been rendered down, a nice fatty sausage. And these extra spices you get in here with the trees, it's a little spicier. Super nice, okay? It's good. Really bury that through. Next, since they're here, let's go with the uh, lemons. What do I do, Jordan, if you want to, just lay them right across that filet on that side. Just like yep. this? All exactly right. like that, start right at the top. Keep going down in there, perfect. There we go. All right, that's good, okay. that's all good. This is all gonna melt here together. Next up, we have the pan behind me. And you go in, you don't have to be fancy about this, just load this up. Love now we it. have these sweet caramelized flavors. We have that in nice black licorice, but this is just beautiful. And now to keep it fresh, uh, we have down below, next up is going to be the parsley. So we have this curly parsley that's right here in front of us. Yep, just load this up. Get it in there. Tons of it. This is fun. Yeah. I wanted to get my hands dirty. Now we have them dirty. <laughs> we took a 15 pound steelhead and we're making it a. <laughs> yeah, right? Pound. We got a 20 pounder. Now today. we got a 20 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around here, I should have the uh, butcher's twine. So, what we're going to do is just go right underneath. And the first one, we're going to lift up. We're going to lift up the fin. There we go. Fit on this side, come back tight to it. Underneath, and then just a tight knot there. And now one thing, I'll show you a cool trick actually. Back it up, do this again, here you go. Now go around like you normally would, go around again. Now truss down, and now you feel that, how tight it is? Yep. It doesn't loosen up as, as uh, easily as it would if you just did that single right. one. There you go, perfect. And we can slice them all at the end. Okay. And so the reason that we tie down the fishes is really two reasons, and they might surprise you, because it's not only just to keep the contents of the belly on the inside, but the fish is going to cook more quickly and more evenly when the fish is trussed like this. There you go, awesome. You've tied fishing knots before, a I can couple, see that. I yeah. did a time or two. <laughs> only a few times today, it wasn't bad. There you go. Yep. Yep, perfect. That's exactly it. Perfect. I'm gonna finish this up with just a little bit around the outside. I wanna season before, during, and after with the cook. 
But because we were working so hard on this fish, getting it over, we lost some of that seasoning. There's just so much delicious flavor. That's amazing. And this is kind of what we're looking for. Anytime we want to get a good amount of tack, and that's when that seasoning really sets in on that fish. Same thing for steaks, same thing for chicken, any types of protein. You want to get a really nice tack on the exterior before it goes into cook. All right. Ready? Looks good. Looks good. Great form, great height. It yeah, is. It's a UBC, it's a UBC grill. grill. It's the UBC. It's come, officially, everybody, it's coined the UBC grill. <laughs> an unnecessary bushcraft grill. It's super rad. I'd say head just right in the, in the triangle there. Yeah. Heck yeah, Ruben. Okay, I'm thinking right like this, boys. It's not gonna be much, but it's something, right? No, listen, this is exactly what we want. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the heat insulating around the fish. We're also maximizing the amount of smoke we get in here too, so we're cooking oh, and we're smoking it's gonna be it down. So good. Yep. The UBC grill. Saw it here first, world. Uh oh, it's not gonna work. We need to maybe rotate. I think we need to trade places here a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, it's more like this. Oh, oh, the stacker technique. Stack it. The stacker technique. Let's go over here just a little bit more. Oh, wow. Be careful, it's gonna slip on that back side okay, of the rock. Okay. There we go. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. <laughs> just built a UBC oven. Exactly. A UBC oven. We have the UBC grill, now we have the UBC oven. <laughs> this is so good. So where you want to have this fish, you want to really be able to put the fish at a point you can only hold your hand above the fire for about three seconds maximum. Now you know you're integrating more kind of grilling per se. Two to three seconds maximum. If you're up to like four to five seconds, now you're looking at like a longer smoke. That's cool. The old flipper dipper Dan. Let's do it without Sorry. taking the oven off. You can feel the heat on the inside of that wood too. That's Ooh. it's working. Look at that. Yeah. Oh go. god. Fine. Oh god. That's what we're looking for. So see, this is what we're looking for in the fish. You're starting to get some of that yellow coloration. Really good stuff. I know it's tougher to see here in the middle of the night while we're cooking, but that's exactly what we're looking for. You know what this is allowing us to do is to really integrate heat and more flavor down in here. So before we put back our UBC grill lid. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more avocado oil, finish this out with some of that New Orleans style seasoning, and then we'll be ready to roll. Sweet. Smoke corn over the grill. Hit it up next, chipotle aioli. Now this chipotle aioli has a little bit of red pepper. We have some paprika that's in here, ground and dried chipotle, peppers, and mayonnaise. And then we're gonna top it off with a little bit of the Cajun seasoning. that easy that's all we do it's rolling down this is actually the pan that we prepared the chorizo in so you have a little bit of that pork fat it's getting around by uh, the corn it's gonna be beautiful so much flavor we're gonna finish this corn off atop the grill top it with the kajita cheese kazoon tight and there we are all right Listen boys, fish is done. We reached 135 in the thick of the fillets. This thing has a beautiful color on the exterior. It's cooked through to the interior. It's time to get these fillets. Uh, and we need to get that corn going too. So let's feast up, huh? Yes. Look, Look at this. that. Another <laughs> kind of yeah. cool part of this. Let's carry it right over to the it's a mobile disturbing grill. area. Mobile table. It's actually becoming a... You got it? Yep. Okay, get that side. Got it? Oh, yep. Yep. Oh wow, what an operation. <laughs> Holy smokes. The super cool part, those scores that we put in, now over the fire, we're really able to get down into the filet with that flavor. Super neat stuff. I love the way this cooked. Mm -hmm. All we're doing here is just we're taking the exterior layer of the lemon. There's tons of super flavorful oils that are in the exterior. This is the zest. And all we're gonna do is just turn this upside down and tap. It's not just for garnish. It's gonna add a really nice bit citrusy, fresh pop, and really brighten up this steelhead. And that's it. 
We're gonna finish this off uh, with the microgreens. We have the kohlrabi and the cabbage microgreens. We're just gonna get this directly over the top. A really super beautiful riverside presentation of a Cajun spiced lemon zest with the microgreen steelhead. Absolutely epic. You guys, sometimes I, a lot of people might not understand how hard we work to get everything right for these videos. And the hardest part of all, funny enough, is taking the last picture of the day. And so about two hours has gone by. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's been about a half hour, but we got the pictures done. And it's That's time all to we eat need, man. This thing. Listen, I say it all the time. <laughs> The camera eats first, <laughs> but listen, this is just incredible. So we have the steelhead that's been stuffed with the chorizo. We have the caramelized onion, the fennel, oh. the fresh herbs. We finished it with that Weber seasons, the, the Cajun seasoning, super epic over the top. We have the lemon zest with the kohlrabi and the cabbage micros. And we paired it up with this Mexican style of street corn, which is so dang epic. <laughs> we have in there, we have the chipotle aioli. We have in there the kojita cheese with the crumble, a little bit of the mm. lime zest. This is gonna be epic, man. Let's super eat. epic. Let's dig in. Let's, Let's do eat. this. Well, boys, what do you think? It's super it's good. Still needs some cooking, but needs a little bit more, but mmm, yum. But this is good. Well, it tastes really good. Mm. I feel like a caveman kind of right now, you guys. Unnecessary bushcraft. It was a lot of that, and then just like now it's just gotten so late in the day, and we're so hungry, everybody. I just, just haven't washed our hands, just shoving our face full of food. Wow, yummy. Mm -mm. Street corn, it's time to, you just get in. You mean river corn? River corn. God. Holy smokes. Ugh, ugh. Not bad, huh? <laughs> you get some of that mm. spiciness, a little bit of that sweetness. You really feel kind of that lemon popping through at the end. If you do it right, you get this corn all over your face. Mm-hmm. Nacho, get that corn out of my face. Well, as we continue into the night, barbarically eating this steelhead, I really hope all you addicts out there enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed having Chef David here with us. We're going out again tomorrow to film another video and doing a completely off the wall recipe that I've never got to do here or never even have the chance to cook. It's gonna be We up. hinted at it earlier, so maybe rewind, check it out. If you guys want to see more fun catching cooks just like this one, go up here and click this link for this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up and comment below. You can be the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody. You stay fishy. We'll see you out there.